Alright guys, it's Chatterbox Reviews, coming at you guys with my review for Killing Eve Season 2, Episode 5. Alright, so we're now in the second half of Killing Eve Season 2, only three more episodes after this one. Uh, hard to believe, right? But, uh, you know, with only eight episodes in the runtime, it is what it is. So anyways, uh, really enjoyed this episode. A lot of stuff here that we've been kind of waiting for, right, with Villanelle and Eve. Um, we've been kind of waiting for since the season one finale, right? And they kind of been building and building and building up to this. Um, but this was a little bit of a, a different direction than what I thought they were going to go with. Um, even in the, um, kind of next time on, uh, last week, I didn't quite see this playing through, right? Um, so they are doing a really good job of keeping things fresh, keeping things kind of, um, you know, you know, incorporating these twists and turns in here that, you really never know, right? You never know which, you know, what what kind of way they're going for. Anyways, love to hear your guys' thoughts of this episode. Um, you know, what did you think of it? What do you think of it compared to, you know, what we've seen so far in Season 2? What are your overall thoughts of Season 2? Love to hear whatever you guys, uh, you know, want to share for sure. Um, and if you like the review, please leave a like and consider subscribing to the channel. Would really appreciate that as well. So, of course, we'll get through a recap here of the episode. Some of the most important moments where there were definitely a few in this episode. Um, especially towards the end. There were some really great moments. And then I get to my rating, favorite character, and some more overall thoughts. And what we might see next week uh, with, of course, the next time segment on this one. Uh, so we'll talk a little bit about that towards the end. But anyways... Without any further ado, let's get into this one. Killing Eve Season 2, Episode 5, Smell You Later, which uh, is an awesome title for this episode um, with once you see the ending, right? Once you see the ending, it all kind of makes sense. Um, and you, it actually uh, works really well for this one. So anyways, um, and there's been a lot of great titles for episodes. I mean, just the premiere, right? Do you know how to dispose of a body? A really great title where what other show would have a title like that for an episode, right? So, anyways, pretty awesome stuff. So, we resume back for this one. Back in the, uh, or in, not necessarily in, but back at the interrogation room. Uh, where we see Eve and Jess kind of looking on through the glass. Um, and so I was a little bit disappointed, to be honest, that we didn't see Eve and the ghost girl in there together. Because that's where we left off last episode. Uh, but it does turn out that... The ghost girl just not giving them anything, right? Just uh, Eve not able to get through to her, I suppose. Not able to get anything out of her. And so now this man goes in, which we... I, I guess they allude to it, but apparently he's kind of a professional. He was in Afghanistan doing this type of work. Uh, so, you know, we get the idea that, you know, Eve wasn't able to do it. Okay, so they brought in the next best guy, right? Or the, the, the professional to do it. So anyway, so he goes in there and tries after Eve doesn't have much success as Jess... Uh, and Carolyn, I think, both allude to there. Um, maybe Eve does as well. And so at this point, the man's not having much success either. And I did like a, a few of the jokes there with Jess and Eve, kind of joking about what he's, you know, talking about. But something that did kind of irk me a little bit was why they weren't able to hear what was going on in the room. And we saw last episode, Carolyn talked to Eve through the speaker of the room, but, she, but Carolyn couldn't hear what Eve was saying. So... I'm a little bit confused by that. Most TV shows and movies where you see an interrogation room, they can hear exactly what is being said on the other end, right? And they're kind of looking. Um, and, you know, you see this even with kind of period shows. I mean, this isn't necessarily new technology or anything. So, to me, it didn't make a lot of sense why they couldn't hear them. But I guess it kind of worked well for the uh, comedy little comedic relief uh, couple lines there uh, that were really great. But anyways, that was just kind of a nitpick for me. So Eve tells Carolyn that she wants to go back and try again and see if this time proves a little bit better and she can get through to her. So she's going to try a little bit of a different method. So then Eve tells Jess she wishes the girl would be more fun and forthcoming about these killings. And Jess tells her, not everyone can be exciting as you know who. I love that she didn't even say her name, right? You know who. Who, because Jess really is picking up on things really quickly here and learning exactly what Villanelle is to Eve and, and what kind of uh, Eve's obsession is right now. Um, and so I love this line by Jess, uh, right? And it's so true, right? You know, Eve's so used to Villanelle and now this ghost girl is a whole different thing, right? She's not making these big kind of shows of her kills um, and, you know, she's not as fun, right, as Eve says. So, 
definitely really enjoy that line. Uh, Eve goes in and basically gets nothing again, right? She gets nothing. Uh, Ghost Girl's not telling her anything, but then Eve asks her if she knows Villanelle or Oksana, right? And the Ghost Girl right away tells her that she is called the Demon with No Face. She looks very intimidated just by hearing her name, right? Just by hearing Villanelle's name, um, from Eve's mouth, I mean, right away, she actually looks really intimidated, and before that, she wasn't really trying to make any kind of face, right, not trying to give anything away, um, and so just right away getting to her, right, so then this really give Eve, they, this gives Eve, sorry, uh, a really kind of weird, kind of convoluted, but ends a brilliant idea here, right? So, it also shows Eve's continued obsession, of course, bringing out Villanelle in this conversation, while maybe she was a little bit relevant, right? But she's wanting to hear, oh, do you know who Villanelle is, right? And trying to get this, and it ends up being, it turns out pretty well uh, for the, for the kind of team and what they're trying to go for and trying to find out who basically paid or or, or kind of who sponsored these killings of Alistair Peel and some other ones um, and who hired the ghost girl to do them, right? So after seeing the ghost's reaction to Villanelle, Eve proposes the idea of ordering a hit on herself in order to attract Villanelle to them so that she can score or sorry, that she can scare the ghost into talking. So hopefully Villanelle will be able to go in there, get an answer from the ghost because now she knows the ghost is kind of, you know, dead scared of her, you know, just horrified, uh, just by her name, and so now, hopefully, Villanelle will be able to help her and be able to do that, so like I said, a very convoluted plan, but it just might work, right, you get that idea that it's, it's so weird and so backwards that it may actually work, right, uh, so then we see Villanelle receive her next job, and it is a picture of Eve, so this was a nice twist here, of course, we knew it was coming, but it was great to see her reaction to this, right? So she gets angry at Constantine, uh, you know, immediately, says she will not do it. Constantine tells her that he doesn't know who ordered it, I <laughs> like that, he doesn't know who ordered it. Which, by the way, I think Carolyn was the one who gave it to him uh, in that scene. I think she was the one that he was meeting, but I'm not sure. Again, we see them in the car a little bit later on in the episode, which I'll discuss, and so I think that they are kind of more together than what we think they are, if, if that makes any sense, and so I wouldn't be surprised if she was the one who gave Eve's picture to Constantine there. Anyways, so he says she, she, you know, he doesn't know who ordered it, and if she kills, you know, if Villanelle kills Eve, she can finally move on, as Eve has made her weak. So really kind of, uh, you know, Constantine just trying to, to push this, and it almost seems like Constantine, you know, kind of put this into motion or was, you know, at least involved in it, because it just seems way too advantageous to him, you know, as a partner of Villanelle, um, you know, if she kills Eve and, and kind of gets rid of this one weakness, right? And so it makes a lot of sense for him. He says, you won't even remember her name by next week. So, you know, and I think she will, right? I think she will remember Eve's name next week, but Constantine trying to push her to do it, right? And again, I, I, I mean, the money is also a huge thing for Constantine and Villanelle, right? A lot of money on the line for this kill. And so, it really puts Villanelle in a spot of, especially after what we've seen at the very end of last episode, it puts her in a spot of, is she actually going to kill Eve, right? It, you know, is she really, she believes that Eve's not interested in her, in her, in her anymore, and now she's going to kill her, right? So I really like the spot that they put her in here. Uh, and so then we see Villanelle, Villanelle struggling with this decision, right? We see her in her hotel room as uh, the room service comes. Just a really kind of funny, but also kind of sad, I guess. You know, a little bit of both. Um, where, she, you know, she tells the, uh, the, the, the room service guy who comes that she's grieving, right? She's grieving over the decision, right? And that she kind of... I think deep down she knows that she's going to have to do it. She she is going to kill Eve here. Um, and so she's already, like, preparing herself, grieving, right, for Eve's death. Uh, so just kind of funny, but again, a little sad seeing Villanelle trying to kind of come to this realization. Um, and then she kind of lays on the lap of the uh, the worker there. So that was a really uh, great scene there. So we see a man come in to do a presentation about psychopaths for Eve. And this actor is from uh, Ghosted on Fox, uh, which I just recently, I uh, believe it was it was ended in 2018. Uh, but he had a small role on that, and I... Uh, 
thought he was actually really funny. And so to see him in here was nice. And I haven't seen him in much else uh, since that uh, that show. So yeah, it was really nice to see him in here anyways. And I know he's been in some other projects too. So I'm sure other people will definitely recognize him as well. Anyway, so he comes in to do these presentations for Eve and the, or just one presentation for Eve and the team as they prepare for their mission. But, a nice twist here, because it seems like it's just kind of a throwaway scene, they're just giving a presentation on psychopaths, okay. But, then we learn later that it was all a setup to see if Eve was actually in the right space to go through this plan, uh, or, you know, go through with this with Villanelle, right? And uh, a really, really interesting thing here. We find out the man is a psychiatrist or something of that. Um, you know, I, I, that's what I assume. I don't think we ever learned that. But, uh, you know, Carolyn does say, you know, based on your uh, professional expertise, right? So I assume that he would be some type of psychiatrist. And he tells Carolyn that Eve is too attached to Villanelle and the plan should not go forward. He says it's a no-go, right? Um, and so I really like this scene too where Carolyn is actually going behind her back. We've already seen this, right? We've already seen that Carolyn has kind of lost all trust in Eve after episode two, right? And that whole situation that happened. And so again, we see Carolyn going behind her back to try to find out because she knows if she asks Eve, she's never going to get the answer, right? That, you know, oh, you're too attached, right? And so she has to get a professional to come on and do a secret presentation, uh, which Eve still doesn't figure out. She doesn't even know, right? So anyways, Carolyn doesn't seem too surprised, though, at this verdict that Eve is too attached and that the plan shouldn't go forward. And to be honest, are we surprised either? Probably not, right? <laughs> we kind of already knew this. And so, again, that kind of brings back to, it's a risky plan because we know Eve's feelings and possibly even obsession, you could call it, for Villanelle at this point, right? So then we learn that Carolyn set up Nico going away for this spelling bee. We see Nico tell Eve that earlier. So that way Eve's house will be free and she will be alone when Villanelle comes to kill her, right? Or, or the meeting is, is kind of arranged, right? So Carolyn not willing to give all of her support for the plan. She even tells Eve, speak now or forever, hold your peace. So again, given this earlier scene, we see that Carolyn not very confident in Eve right now because this guy, you know, professional psychiatrist just told her that she's too attached, right? And, and that they shouldn't go forward with this plan. And, but she is basically letting Eve do it herself. She's really not going to sign on necessarily, um, you know, and give her professional consent as Eve alludes to here, but she's going to let Eve go through with it anyway. So it's very interesting here, the Carolyn and Eve dynamic, and they've done a great job in showing the difference between just even episode two and now. I mean, it's it's a stark difference, right? Um, with that kind of confidence level, trust level, it's just out the window for Carolyn uh, with Eve at this point. But anyways, so we see, I really like this scene, perhaps one of my favorites of the episode, with Kenny voicing his disapproval to Eve. And... I really like this scene, telling her she's risking the whole team and putting herself in danger, and also the the, the other team members, for no good reason, right? He, uh, he basically reminds her that Villanelle murdered Bill right back in episode 3 of season 1, and that she can easily do the same in this situation, right? So really, I, I like those callbacks too, whenever they mention Bill, Frank, and these other, you know, big situations that happened in season 1, because those are things that you don't forget, and let's remember, it hasn't been all that long since those things happened, right? I mean, we've, it's been about a year and a half in real time, but in the show, I would say it's maybe a month or two have passed, right, since then, or maybe three months, so um, I really like whenever they call these back, and with that point, Kenny has a great point here, right, and to me, he's really the voice of reason at this point for Eve, because she's just going in totally kind of clouded right now, and he, and, and sorry, and Kenny is kind of providing that, like, what kind of us viewers are saying, right, is like, why are you doing this, right, why would you kind of put yourself in danger, and put the rest of us in danger, just so you can see Villanelle and, and try to get this, you know, kind of feeling back again, maybe for Villanelle. And so I really like what he's saying. Kenny asks her, what has she become? So really switching, um, 
perspectives here uh, on Eve and, and Kenny and her were so close in season one and we've seen this kind of progression with season two with Kenny and he has been there the whole time and seen Eve since the beginning while Hugo and Jess are kind of just coming on uh, right now and he's able to see what she has really become and it's not good right uh, so anyway so Eve responds by telling him that she will tell Carolyn to move him off the team since he doesn't agree with her and he's asking questions so wow right I'm not sure if this will actually happen. This is the last we see of Kenny in this episode. So I'm I'm hoping that we don't see Kenny transferred or something like that. But that's just how it is right now, right? Eve is just not willing, kind of blind right now, to reason. And that's what Kenny is trying to do. And, and I think we really see that he truly does care about Eve or else he wouldn't be saying all these things, right? He would just be kind of pandering to her and letting her do whatever she wants. So, again, I really like this dynamic. Really like what they've done with Kenny in this season. I mean, you know, last season, again, kind of just the yes man, I would say, of sorts. And kind of, you know, the cool tech guy. Becoming a little bit of a cliche character to me. But in this season, they've done such a good job. So, again, I think he's right. Eve's judgment is completely clouded when it comes to Villanelle. And we've seen this before, especially with episode two. And now, it's just kind of out the window with this whole plan. So, finally... Finally, the whole first half of the episode is building up to this moment where Villanelle arrives at Eve's house. So, she arrives in a black dress and a matching veil, right? Just <laughs> So, it was awesome. She says, you know, I dress for the occasion because I'm about to be grieving, right? Because she's going to kill Eve. So, I really like that uh, costume and, and just the, the lines back and forth there. So, just before she does, Eve takes off her vest. So, that was an important thing, I believe. Kind of symbolizing that... She doesn't feel, you know, in danger, right? She She's not kind of afraid of Villanelle anymore. And I think that scene there of her taking off the vest right before symbolized that. Or perhaps it also symbolized that if she had the vest on, it would show Villanelle fear, right? And so maybe she's trying to hide that from Villanelle in that scene and look kind of more nonchalant. But either way... I think that can be interpreted both ways, but I think it was still a meaningful thing there before she comes. So, as Villanelle comes to the kitchen for a drink, she sinks Eve's phone in the champagne right away so that she can't call for help or backup. Really smart, right? Really smart. And we can see Eve's reaction just right away. And, and again, I think this speaks to the fact that Eve still underestimates Villanelle, right? She didn't see this coming. And it's like, really? at this, Really at this point? So again, I think that speaks back to their judgment being clouded. Anyway, so she senses that Eve is not surprised to see her and says that she thought she had lost interest in her. So we really do see now that Villanelle did believe that Eve lost interest because, of course, she didn't arrive in Amsterdam at that crime last, uh, last episode, right? And that was a big deal. So, Eve then gets a little bit closer uh, to her as they talk about what happened last time they met. Of course, the stabbing, right? They both admit they think about that moment all the time. So, really kind of, they slow it down here. A little bit of music playing in the background becomes a really kind of really sentimental moment I would say between Villanelle and Eve but also eerie too because you don't know what Villanelle is about to do or Eve for that matter given what she did last time they met um and there was this t same type of scene right they were getting kind of close and intimate and then all of a sudden she stabs her right so um you really don't know if something's going to come out of nowhere and I, to me this was really an example of Eve playing Villanelle here Right when Villano kind of starts to ask questions and, and, and say you're not interested in me anymore, Eve gets closer to her, right? And touches her face even. So I really feel like Eve just trying to play here, uh, or play her story here in this scene. So... Then Villanelle says, are you going to apologize to me? And he just says, no, right? And then they go the back and forth and, and uh, you know, Villanelle uh, says no, that she's not going to apologize either. Uh, and so it was really great. And Eve said, well, that's settled. And then she just walks away. So the dialogue in this scene was really great, along with the rest of the episode too. Just love it, right? Eve tells her the truth that she was the one who ordered the hit in order to get Villanelle to help her. And then Villanelle raises the question, why would she do that, right? Villanelle could have easily killed her unexpectedly hit her with a car she says and Eve would have been dead right why would she have done that but Eve tells her and and this I think speaks to the whole fact of why she was at all willing to do this is because Eve says 
she knew that Villanelle wouldn't do anything like that, right? And you think about it, she's right. Villanelle would not do something like that. And even in this scene, we don't know if she actually would have went through with it before Eve kind of convinced her to help her. But I don't know. I don't even know if she would have went through with it there. So it's really tough to to kind of think of her, you know, doing that, right? And so it's a little bit better in thinking, okay, maybe Eve did know all along, right? Maybe this plan was a little bit better than what everyone was expecting because Eve knows her better than anyone else. And she knew that Villano was not going to do something like that and that she was at least going to get some advance on getting killed or she would be able to reason with Villanelle, and she was right. She was right after all. So after Villanelle uh, tricks her with the pills, we see that she still has control over the situation, not Eve. Eve falls for these uh, pills, you know, uh, trick. I didn't fall for it because I, I saw it the whole way, the whole way through, and we know Eve is not going to die. So um, I, I saw this the whole way through, but Eve falls for it, of course, and Villanelle kind of laughing. So we see for a second, you kind of get out of it, right? You think Villanelle, oh, like, this is a really kind of emotional, tense scene. And then all of a sudden, right, they remind us, nope, Villanelle doesn't feel these emotions the same way, and she's just going to play a trick on Eve here. So anyways, uh, I thought that was great. So Villanelle tells her she is expensive and that she must give her everything she wants if she is going to help her. So I like that, and she also gets a knife and, and kind of running it down Eve's, uh, you know, stomach, uh, Crazy stuff, right? So kind of scaring Eve again. So we see then both of them get in the back of a truck outside her house. But as they pull away, Carolyn and Constantine sit in her car watching together. So that to me was maybe the biggest twist of the episode, seeing the Constantine and Carolyn back together. And I said this right when Constantine and Villanelle went off freelancing together. I knew Constantine had some up his sleeve. And I still think that. I think that him and Carolyn have really been working together this whole time. And this has all been kind of part of their plan. And even Eve doesn't know that. So I'm wondering exactly what they'll do here. But I did really like this twist. And we'll have to see how this is all going. If this is, you know, real, what they were doing together in that car. Anyways, that was a really big twist. And honestly, you could have you could have blinked and missed it. It was a really quick visual there. Last about five or ten seconds. And then boom, scene switched, right? So anyways... So we see men take the ghost girl then uh, in a van to the middle of the forest, uh, put them in a uh, storage, a massive storage container. So they put her in there blindfolded, setting her up for what's to come. And we know what's to come, right? So Eve and Villanelle then arrive at the forest. Eve goes in one last time, right? One last time before Villanelle to try and get her to talk, right? Uh, you know, one last try. She's going to give her one last chance. So things are going to get worse for you, Eve says. And we know that's true, right? We know that's true. Uh, she doesn't know quite what she's into uh, or what she's going to get into yet. But in that moment, Eve is telling the truth. So when she doesn't talk to Eve, one last try, she doesn't talk. Villanelle gets uh, sent in, right? Eve sends Villanelle in. So that was awesome. So then we get this line where Villanelle says, do you want to watch, right? And Eve hesitates here. Eve hesitates before she says no. Now, I think this can be interpreted in many different ways, or maybe I'm just looking at this a little too closely, but I think that hesitation actually means something. Now, I don't think Eve did, you know, obviously I don't think she wants to watch because we find out later that it looks like Villano didn't actually physically harm her that much. So maybe it wouldn't have been that bad to watch necessarily, but I think it definitely does speak to something. I, I think Eve would have answered that a little bit sooner um, if, if they weren't trying to build something there. But anyways, and uh, so then after a few stressful moments for Eve outside, hearing a little bit of noise, the chains clanking. So we're, we're under the impression, right, that she's being like tortured in there by Villanelle. So Villanelle finally comes out and tells her that Aaron Peel is the one who ordered the hits and that he is selling a weapon, not just the company. So Eve is very surprised at this. I think this is kind of a logical conclusion, given the scene that we saw with Jess and Eve going to visit Aaron last episode, very suspicious, kind of really not helping his cause, right, getting his lawyer in there to answer questions, so I just feel like he was definitely too suspicious for for him to be trusted at this point, so I kind of uh, buy that, and I do believe that Aaron Peel is kind of responsible, so we'll have to see how that plays out, and it looks like that is exactly what they'll do next episode in trying to do 
get out, you know, more information from Aaron and perhaps uh, maybe even infiltrate him with Villanelle, as we see in the premiere uh, or the the uh, teaser, I guess, for for the next episode. So, anyways, Villanelle then demands a proper thank you from Eve and gets nothing. Right? Eve says thank you, uh, and then Villanelle wants a little bit more. Not sure what exactly that means, but Eve is not willing to give it to her. So then, uh, of course, though, we see Eve is suspicious, right? And maybe that's why she doesn't thank her quite yet, because she's suspicious over what she did to her and how easily Villano was able to get that information from her. And so she goes in as Villanelle walks away, right? So she walks away, you know, supposedly gets a ride, and she's gone. But Eve goes in to see what happened. She goes inside to see the ghost girl unchained and sitting there, looks like lifeless, right? Until she kind of taps her on the knee, and the girl looks up at Eve, calling her a monster. So this, and she just looks traumatized from something Villanelle did to her. And again, it doesn't look like she was really physically harmed that much, um, or if anything. So I'm really not sure Villanelle did, or if this is a lie. Maybe Villanelle lied to Eve here, given this, this next scene. I don't know. So it's very interesting here to see, and maybe, I'm hoping that we'll find out what Villanelle did, I feel like it'll be a Villanelle and Eve scene, and she'll admit to Eve what she did to her, um, but either way, uh, crazy stuff going down, and so Eve now, uh, trapped inside there, right, she's trapped inside with the ghost girl, she doesn't have any chains on anymore, um, so it is interesting there, uh, but yeah, so there's really no blood no kind of sign of, of, of torture or anything like that. So it was a little bit surprising for sure uh, to see her getting that information so quickly. But anyways, uh, again, I hope we find out what she did and uh, we'll find out if it was even true, right? We'll find out if the ghost girl uh, actually told her real information. So anyways, then to the end of the episode, this was crazy. So Villanelle tracks down Nico on his school trip. This was crazy. I, I'm, I'm going to be honest, right when I saw Villanelle in that scene, I'm like, Nico, no, right, Nico's dead, and, I, and right away, I'm like, okay, she's killing Nico, right, and, and you just, like, right away, and even throughout that whole scene, until we see her, like, for sure walking away at the end, I'm like, okay, Nico's dying here, right, <laughs> Villanelle's going to kill him, but she doesn't, but anyway, still such an amazing scene, so she stands beside him, just a chilling visual there when you first see it, and I think you can miss it at first, because you just see, you're focusing on Nico walking up, you see this person standing beside him, and then all of a sudden you're like, no, that's Villanelle, right? Like, this just seems out of place, because we've never seen these two characters interact through 12 episodes of the show, or, or now 13, so it's really crazy. Anyways, he figures out who she is right away, not necessarily figuring out she's Villanelle, but figuring out that she is dangerous, and that she is the one that he's been tracking, right? So, um, she, uh, she tells him, I'm sorry about the complaints. I was just trying to get Eve's attention, but she does not care about your life at all. So right away, kind of admitting to him, right, who she is and that she's been the one firing in those complaints. So he walks away from the kids, figuring that she is dangerous. Uh, he's kind of getting alone in the alleyway so nobody can see them. Uh, and I think even he thought at this point that he might be getting killed, right? So anyways, they're alone in the alleyway and he tries pinning her up against the wall. Uh, Vilda kind of pokes at him about Eve, right, saying, you know, maybe you should act like this with your wife, or something like that, right, which obviously kind of sets him off, and he threatens to kill her, gets a tighter grip on her against the wall, um, and it's like, does he know who he's dealing with, right, um, and obviously he doesn't, or at least he doesn't yet, um, he doesn't know who he's dealing with, so I really like that, and then Villanelle kind of makes him step back, you know, she does her um, kind of playing innocent victim, uh, you know, a little bit, as she does in a lot of these kills, actually, um, it kind of tries to get that vulnerable moment out of the, uh, you know, out of the person that she's trying to kill, and then in that moment, she kind of strikes, but anyways, uh, so he steps back, and she tells him that she came there to tell him he doesn't have anything to worry about, as she has forgiven Eve for stabbing her. So, really kind of twisting the tables, because again, I thought for sure she'd kill him here, but it turns out, She's got nothing to worry about, but of course he does, right? She doesn't come here just to tell him that. Instead, she tells Nico the truth, the truth about everything, pretty much, right? 
She tells him the truth about what happened with the stabbing and says, you think I was the bad guy? You think I, sorry, you think I was the bad guy, right? Uh, she says, and, you know, shows him the knife mark, too, or the stab wound, too. So proving that, I mean, she's not just lying here, right? Nico it, it basically sees the stab wound, hears the, the complete story that Eve has completely lied to him about. And so, to me, this was just a really, really kind of crazy scene here for Villanelle to reveal all this to him. Um, and also reminding me how much Eve has lied to him, right? I mean, this is just kind of common knowledge to us. But Nico still doesn't know anything about this, right? So you really kind of get that that impression that he's really out of the loop. So we see Nico just dumbfounded at this point, really no response to anything Villanelle is telling him because it's all new information, right? He finds this even hard to believe, probably. So now we see awesome, awesome line here from Villanelle. She says, it's so nice to finally meet you. Smell you later. And of course, that's the title of the episode. So wow, right? And then she walks away. So Pretty crazy stuff. To me, this is so smart because it's more, it's perhaps more impactful than killing him, right? It's even more impactful for telling him the truth here than killing him. Um, and obviously, she's really only just trying to hurt Eve rather than Nico, right? She doesn't really care about Nico at all at this point. But maybe even you can say that she's trying to separate the two. And I think that's what this will do. I think Nico may even leave Eve as a result of of this, uh, of Villanelle telling him the truth finally, and him finding out how much Eve has lied to him, uh, about all of this, especially that though, so, anyways, I, I just, at a really brilliant kind of decision by Villanelle here, and like I said, maybe even more impactful than killing him, by telling him the truth, arming him with that truth, and now, We'll have to see how Nico responds, uh, you know, and, and we see a little scene in the teaser for next episode of him confronting Eve. Um, it's going to be crazy, and we'll have to see what happens with that. All right, so in terms of a rating for this episode, I'm going to give it a 4.7 out of 5. Uh, like I said, I really enjoyed this one. I will say a very slow-paced episode until about halfway through. Um... Villanelle arrives at Eve's house here around the 20 to 22 minute mark, I think, of the episode. And up until that point, it's like, okay, you know, they're setting up this plan. They're setting up the plan. All right. And, and, and we're finally, you know, when, once Villanelle arrives, we're like, finally, right? At, you know, and so to me, I just felt like it was a little bit of an uneven episode. And then, of course, that last couple scenes there are really crazy. And so I just felt like they maybe could have spread out a little bit in this episode. Um, but it, it is what it is. I really did like the build up and it was definitely a good payoff. Um, but maybe just a little bit spread out. But anyway, setting up uh, some for some big things, but never quite paid off until the end. Um, and, and again, that just basically basically what I said, right? It, you know, setting up a lot of big things like, oh, this could go wrong. Kenny questions the plan, right? Putting them all in danger. Carolyn, uh, very kind of not very confident in the plan. But then everything seemed to work out as planned in the end, right? Villanelle goes, they get the answer, and everything seems to work out. So to me, it just felt like, again, a very slow pace at the beginning, setting up these scenes, setting up all this stuff, but then everything kind of seemed to work out, right? And those scenes with Kenny and Carolyn questioning the plan and questioning Eve were really for nothing. So anyways, it just feels like it's almost too perfect. So I feel like something is going to go wrong here or maybe it's not the truth what Villanelle told Eve or something like that because it just seems too easy. Uh, great dialogue in this episode. The Villanelle and Eve scene was written uh, flawlessly in my opinion. I loved it and some of the other dialogue throughout this episode was really, really great as well. And Villanelle and Eve working together. This is something that we thought we would never see um, and in the teaser for next episode it looks like they actually will be working together, um, you know, in, in trying to maybe infiltrate Aaron P and trying to get some more answers here in this case crazy stuff and i'm really hyped for it favorite character is going to be eve for this one played by sandra O. Oh. awesome job as always thought there was a lot of uh focus on her in this episode and i liked her story a little bit better in this episode it seemed like she got a little bit more development than last episode um and it just the, the decision she made made sense in this one whereas last episode a couple of the scenes there i wasn't really liking and i didn't feel like it was 
realistic for Eve as a character to make those type of decisions and say the things that she was saying. I felt like the writing was just a little bit off. But this one I thought was really great, and Sandra Oh doing an amazing job as always. Um, and I, I've said it before, Jodie Comer I think is raised to another level this season, but I still think Sandra Oh was great, and she's probably going to be in the Emmy contention again this year. But anyways, guys, I'll just about do it for my review of this episode. Thank you guys so much for watching this one, and thank you so much for the support on these, uh, you know, these reviews and the channel in general. Really do appreciate it. So again, guys, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next week for Killing Eve Season 2, Episode 6. There's something about the way you are that makes me.